Talk Bowling, episode 82. I'm John Gunga. I'm Tony Rucco. Talk Bowling is proud to bring you the latest information from the bowling industry, bowling tips, and updates on the largest internet bowling website, bowlingball.com. Yes, we are actually going to try something different today. A new show format. Yes, we'll see how it works out. We'd like your feedback. We're actually going to do one question per episode, yep. but we're going to give you more episodes per week. It's kind of spread it out and see how that works out. So let us know your thoughts. We'll see how it goes. Yes. This, today's question comes from YouTube user Destination Exile. I'll ask this question because you have a you use the wrist device. Okay, go for it. I'll let you. Okay. Question of the week. Uh, I use the wrist. I use the this wrist is why support. I ask a question. No, go ahead. Yeah, this is <laughs> this is tough to do. I use the wrist support since my wrist is weak, and I want to start playing without it. Should I get a lighter ball since I'm using the 14 pound ball right now? And as everyone who's watched our videos has noticed, I've gone from using one to not using one. And I understand not wanting to use one. They are a pain in the ass sometimes. They, they feel clunky. Did you see that? You just did? Oh, I said it. Wow. Okay, good. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Don't worry about things. Golly. Anyway, I understand not wanting to use them. They, 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 they're clunky. They they just look funny sometimes. You get teased sometimes. Are you bullied? By you? Besides me? No, not really. Oh, okay. Not really bullied, but oh, they, I'm gonna take them down. They're just they're not fun to use sometimes. I stopped using mine only because I forgot to take it to league one night. I had no choice and then that night I realized either my style changed, my release changed, something changed, and I felt like I could do more with the ball. Well, your 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 body, your your muscle memory, your timing, your, everything got better. Uh, my notes on this question were: the advice I give people when they're wanting to use a wrist device, or when I'm in the pro shop with them, if you put a wrist device on and you go bowl with it, and it feels horribly wrong or very strange, you need to wear it because that means your your wrist and your hand are, is not in the proper position without it. When you can take that off and achieve the same type of roll which which you were able to, then you're fine. Take it off. Um, the other thing to remember is a wrist device. It, a wrist device is a training aid. It's not a crutch. You don't have to always use it. Mm -hmm. uh, so just because you take it off doesn't mean you don't put it back on in three weeks. Or some people practice with one on. And you you go and you bowl your three games of practice or whatever you do. You use, leave the wrist device on when you bowl league. You take it off. It, it is meant to be a training aid. So. To specifically answer your question, though, there should be no reason to change the weight of your bowling ball. Right. Uh, that is, the weight of your ball is determined by a lot of different factors, and the fact that you're using a wrist device or not using a wrist device shouldn't change that. If you need to use a wrist device to use a 14-pound ball, then yes, maybe that ball is too heavy for you. But in general terms, no, you don't change the weight of the ball. Now, I know back in the day, using a 16-pound versus 15 had a huge advantage. Today it seems like 14, 15, and 16 all seem to have. Well, they've engineered these balls right now. The, the engineering of these balls is, is so much more superior than it was. And yes, you can get away with using 14, 15 pounds. Now, does that apply to 12, 13? Uh, not so much. There's still some some actual technical and performance differences in 12 and 13 pounds. Right. Not that there's anything wrong with that. And if you have to use that weight, I know people that do, and they and they throw plenty of strikes. Uh, it still comes down to mass times velocity getting to the pins. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, they've made these balls pretty strong now. So you can go down and wait and still achieve it. As you guys know, I throw nothing but 14. We've talked about that quite a bit. And I probably can handle 15, but I just I like the way I throw the ball at 14 now. Mm -hmm. So I stay with it. And I don't find like, that I lose any deflection or any pin carry. So, so that hope you, hopefully that helped Destination Exile. Yeah. We Couple different points there. So yeah. The rest of us and the weight of the ball. Thank you very much for asking. If you have a question, <coughs> you can contact us by. I got to do this whole other part, Okay. So. You can contact us uh, by emailing us questions at talkbowling. You can leave a comment on talkbowling.com, episode 82, or any episode. Uh, and you can also contact us on Twitter at talkbowling. There you go. This episode is brought to you by Champs Sports. Did, did you know that Champs Sports offers you a winning selection in sportswear and shoes from leading brands in the industry? Whether you're into basketball, soccer, baseball, or just plain old running, Champs Sports has the shoes for you. With name brands like Nike, Jordan, Adidas, and more, you are sure to find something that suits you. Champs Sports is 
the Unite is for the ultimate sports fans. I don't know where I got United from. That's right. Talk to all viewers and save 10% off any order over $50 or more using promotion code AFTALKCH. And if you spend over $75, use promotion code AFBOWLCH to save 15% instead. We are paid affiliate of Champs Sports. That means we only get paid when you shop. Please support us by supporting them. Go get your stuff. Yes. All right, last week's question of the week, or the previous question of the week, I should say. Uh, in what year was the first non-wooden bowling ball introduced? What was it called, and what was it made of? Oh, that's last week. I can answer this one. Yes. Sorry. The answer to that question is, uh, in 1905, it was called the Ever True, and it was made of rubber. Uh, nine years later, Brunswick introduced the Mineralite Ball. I guess that's just a fun fact. Nine years later. Yeah. There you go. Bob Jerome. <laughs> okay. Now, today's question. In what year did Brunswick introduce dots and arrows arrow markers to their lanes, dramatically improving accuracy for most bowlers. I guess before that it was just plain wood. I, I believe so. Not even separate boards, do you think? I believe it was still separate boards. It just it was harder to find five, ten, fifteen. Yeah, I, I think so. I don't know for sure. I wasn't around. I missed that time period, but I have a feeling. Uh, <laughs> I missed that time period. I have a feeling that it was still boards. They just were marked. Gotcha. Yeah. So all right, in closing, please remember that Bowling is free shipping on every item every day. No hidden handling fees, no packaging fees. The price shown on the product page is the price you pay at checkouts. No surprises. Right. Anything uh, else? I'm trying to think. I don't think so. Um, if there are, we'll tell you yeah. in a couple days. Thank you very much yeah, for watching. Thanks. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>